What's up guys, welcome back to another video. So previously you guys saw that we tried to start the 1UZ and the 240, but unfortunately it caught on fire and I think it's because we didn't have any headers on. So we ended up trying to go to the pick and pull to grab some. They weren't, they didn't have the ones that we wanted. So we ordered them online. We we're trying to do this as budget as possible. So we went ahead and grabbed some OEM headers from a different car. They just came in. So we're gonna go ahead and unbox them. These are the headers that we got right here. They're from a first gen Sequoia. And unfortunately when we tried to go get them at the junkyard, they weren't, all the engines were taken. But we were able to find some online. And when we unbox them, they look super narrow. So hopefully they'll be able to fit on the car. Or at least hopefully we don't have to do too much modification to get it to fit. bit more angle to the flange end so I just chopped a little tiny section almost like a pie cut and I bent it together that's an easier way instead of actually chopping the whole thing off and repositioning it so at least it keeps a little bit of structural integrity so I'm gonna go ahead and see if I increase the bend enough if not I'm gonna go ahead and chop some more and bend it again so let's go ahead and test fit it in the car right now We test fit it back on top of the car and it seems like it fits really good. It clears all these lines now. So we're just gonna take it back out and then weld this part shut. Now the passenger side is bolted up so now we can start working on the driver's side this side is gonna need probably a little bit more modification but I guess we'll test fit it first and see how far off we are we got the manifold mocked up on the driver's side as you guys can see it just touches this heat shield right here so we'll probably clearance that just a tiny bit and the steering shaft here needs to go there and it's just touching, so I kind of made my marks there as you guys can see. So we're gonna go ahead and adjust the bend a little bit and then clearance this little section out for the steering shaft. But other than that, this is the reason why I guess you go with Sequoia or Tundra headers because they're really low profile compared to the LS400 ones. So yeah, let's go ahead and clearance this to get this to fit and then we can put everything back on. The driver's side is finished. There is a little, how do you call it? Like a cutout. A little cutout right here so that way the drive shaft can go straight through it. And it doesn't touch so everything is welded up. I just grinded everything down. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot some water on it and then we can put it inside the car. So 
So you have the water hose and the fire extinguisher ready. I was gonna put the car on the ground, but I figured there's a fire, it's better to be able to spray up underneath it. Oh yeah. So we got the headers and the old two centers in and we're gonna try to start the car. Are you ready? Hopefully it does. This is gonna be our first time actually gonna start it. So let's see. I'm kind of nervous. I'm kind of nervous too. <laughs> because of the last time. Okay, you ready? Just try, just hit it, tap it. Oh, stop. That's why it's catching on fire. Why? Just tap it again. So last time we tried to start it, it caught on fire. And Blaine just saw that it's leaking fuel from right over here from this fitting. But I realized I didn't tighten it. I just hand tightened it. Oh, because we were just testing it when yeah. we got yeah. So there is some fuel leaking, so we're just making sure that everything that is leaking gets tightened. So tighten this and this, this should be good. But now there's some leaking on the other side, so we're going to look through it and see what we can fix. Oh, ah! oh need This? Yeah. How do you do this? Oh, it's freaking dead. Here, I'll do that. You can do that. Oh. Grab the other question too. We were just talking about figuring out how the car is actually catching on fire because we didn't know where the spark was coming from. We just knew where the fuel was coming from and just looked inside. I'm not sure what what part of the engine is this called? It's just under the intake manifold. Like where the starter is. You see that brown? That's a that's an open wire. And I don't know where it goes to, but it's it's open. Like that's open. Meaning there's no insulation over it. It's just an open wire. So I'm wondering if that goes to the starter because this right here is a starter and it looks like it's going that way. So if this is getting 12 volts and shorting out on something, all this leaking fuel, that's what's catching it on fire. So I think the best bet is to figure out what this wire is and fix it as well as anything under the block because I mean, we fixed majority of the fuel leaks but when the the fire is coming from under here and so far this is a frayed wire right here that we can see so i guess we gotta take this all stuff all this stuff back off yeah because i was wondering like you know just the, the fuel is leaking but the only spark should be coming from like the coils or the plugs nothing on the outside of the engine should be sparking like that so i'm assuming there's a shorted wire in this manifold or under the manifold somewhere where the fires are starting so i guess tomorrow we can start taking all the covers off and then checking that first and then i guess we'll see if there's anything else it, it doesn't just it doesn't like boom. like it goes boom after there's fuel there but when mm -hmm. we first started starting it was leaking water uh, fuel it didn't do nothing but when, uh, it, when it sits there and the fumes start coming up like when it, the starter you, turns you crank, on and you crank it you hit the starter it goes boom Oh, Look okay. for the video. I have a video on it. Well, the one that I recorded. But yeah, it it only catches on fire when we crank it. So um, I'm wondering if that's a starter 12 volt wire. I think that is. That cause... maybe got frayed. Yeah. Somehow. I don't know how. Maybe a rat went in there and chewed it up or something. Before we had it, obviously. Oh. Before we had it. <laughs> I was like, what? You know, because that's a big cavity. Like a, a mouse or something to go in there. Like animals yeah. like to go in abandoned or cars that sit yeah so maybe a rodent or something chewed up that wire or chewed up the insulation because they like to the insulation or something i don't know all i know is that that wire is not supposed to be open like that and it is mm -hmm. and if that's the starter wire we'll update you guys on what it is and that's getting 12 volts when we crank it uh, that's what's starting the fire oh other okay. than the leaking gas that's the source of our spark uh-huh yeah so so that's one of our things we can double check first before we try start it again. Yeah. So I guess we'll take all this off. It's good. You can repaint it. Whatever. Yeah, I wanted to repaint it anyways. Yeah. Um, and also some of the paint got damaged when the <laughs> the last wire. 
it's almost there. Like it almost sounds like it's about to start. I feel like if I can give it throttle, mm -hmm. it'll start. Um, it almost cranked over the, the the time before it caught on fire just now. Yeah. So I think it's gonna be there. Or I think it can be there. I just I, if I would have gave it some gas. But I was looking for the throttle cable, but I forgot that I could just manually. Oh yeah. Manually hit the throttle like that. So we're gonna go ahead and get a new one of these. This is a little bit too big. I think that's why. I don't know if it needs to open a diaphragm for this to return and there's just too much fuel in here or something, but we're gonna go ahead and get a new vacuum hose for the return. Um, fix that wire. Yeah. Make sure there's no more fuel leaks and then uh, try to start it again and hopefully it starts. Okay.